Hello everyone, I hope you're having a great day. So today I am going to be showing you all about thrusters in Starbase. First I'm going to show you how to build them, then I'm going to show you how to actually put them on your ship and configure them properly, and finally I am going to take a ship or two that have their thrusters not working right now or there's a weird thrust issue or something and I am going to fix it up so I can show you guys how to fix your ships if ever you run into a thing where your own thrusters don't work. So let's hop right into it. The first thruster that I'm going to show you is going to be the boxed thruster. This is how you assemble it. It's pretty standard. You have your box thruster nozzle and this is a tiered component with thrusters, box and triangle. You have tiered components. So the tiered components are your box thruster nozzle, the box thruster body itself, and then the propellant converter and electricity converter that you slide in the top. However, the component that is not tier based is going to be your combustion chamber. Your combustion chamber is going to be the same all around. And all you do to put these together is you assemble it like so, and you just drag in, make sure your snapping is on, and you just drag it in, and it'll all click into place, and then you just hit auto bolt, and your thruster will be created. Then, with our triangle thruster, the components are the same, but look a little bit different. So first off, you've got your combustion chamber. Remember, it's not a tiered component, so it works for every single thruster. So let's put that in. Then, we've got all of the rest of the tiered components. Your thruster nozzle, let's just throw that in there. And then you've got both your electricity converter and your propellant converter. Now, these are the same as on the box thruster, so no worries about having to find your other components. And theoretically, these can operate without these little uh, fellows on here, but remember, they give you bonuses. That, that's very important. They give you bonuses, and they let your engines run much better. So it's important that you have them on there, because they, they aren't very expensive, to be fair, especially at tier 1. Next, we've got our plasma thruster. Now, it looks a little bit daunting. Uh, even when I tried to put these together, it was difficult. So let's just start from the base. On the base, you're going to see these components right here, and I'll show you how to do it. We'll start with our plasma thruster engine. So you're going to take the parts and you're going to assemble it like this. Let's move these away so I can show you better. There you are. It looks like they have the indents there and it forms that little square in the middle. And then we get this part. This is actually three separate parts. So two of them are the thruster capacitor slots and then the other one is your core. So let's slide these on. And remember, the core, this is going to be where you're going to put your hard points. This is where you're going to actually connect it to your ship. So keep in mind where that is because it is very important. Then you've seen these slots right here. Well, look at that. We've got plasma thruster capacitors. And there they go. We just slide them right in and easy peasy. Next up, we've got the plasma thruster frame. And as you can see, it's another four part piece. A lot of these are going to be four part or two part pieces. So just keep that in mind when you're assembling it because you may need to copy some pieces over. So we'll just slide that over and it goes right on the side. And then you want it to look like this once you have that plasma thruster frame on. This side is gonna be the beginning of your thruster. Next, you've got your plasma thruster nozzle collar. Now, this is also very important, as this is what allows your main engine part here to connect to your superconductors. So, what are the superconductors, you ask? Well, since a plasma thruster doesn't have tiers, it instead is modular. And the more of these superconductors that you put on, the more powerful it will be. So just keep that in mind when you're designing them, because you can make very, very powerful thrusters with plasma thrusters, and for a good amount of how many you 
put these on because you can put as many of these as you want on, the efficiency of the plasma thruster will increase. So you're probably kind of wondering, you know, what are these, what's the difference between these two superconductors? Well, it's literally only visual. This one has these little supports on the outside, which make it very, very easy for you to connect it to your ship and make sure it's strong and connected to the frame. And we'll just put those on like that. And then finally, this part is the only other part that is going to be very necessary that you have it. And this is the thruster nozzle. And two parts, you know, some of these are two parts, four parts, three parts. It gets a little confusing, but I believe in you guys. And then there you go. You just slap that on and that's the end of your plasma thruster. And just just keep in mind with all of these thrusters when you do actually mount them on a ship they are depending on the weight of the ship they will exert a lot of stress especially the plasma thruster so what i'm going to show you is how to put them on properly because putting them on properly can be really important and if you don't put them on properly your ship might not be able to fly at all all right over here we've got our little test bed where I'm going to show you how to put them on a ship. The first thing you guys are going to want when you're putting thrusters on a ship is hard points. There are two kinds, primarily, and that is the large hard point and just the device hard point. Now, you can use either. It's personal preference and just, you know, how you want your ship to go. Personally, I like to use the large hard points for box thrusters, and then the device hard points for triangles. And I'm gonna show you why that is in a second. So with the large hard point, for anyone wondering, I just hit Control C, Control V after selecting that. So there we go, we just put it on the ship. Then you take your thruster, and there are two ways to do this. Again, I'm gonna copy this. You can just line it up like this, so that it, this is the proper way it would look if you were putting it on one of these hard points. Or what you can do is you can take these, you can go over to your snapping tool, hotkey seven, hover over it and get the actual snapping spot. And then there, that makes it super easy to snap and will save you a lot of time. Then next up, after we put those on, you've got your triangle thrusters. Now triangle thrusters are going to be a little different than your box thruster. And why is that? Well, with triangles, um, how do I put this politely? Uh, they're funky, okay? So the first thing you're gonna notice is look at that. That device hard point doesn't look great. And even when you stack a triangle thruster, which keep in mind is something that you can do with triangle thrusters, you realize that the device hard point you're gonna to have to put on the back is gonna be off-centered, which nobody wants. So when you like put it on your ship and you snap it on, if the snapping will work, come on, if the snapping will work, but I guess not. So, you know, you'll notice it could fit like this, but that won't work because the hard point is in the center. If we snap it, there we go. If it's snapped properly, look at that, it's off-center. And who wants that? Nobody wants that. And so this is why when I'm using triangle thrusters, I don't like to use the large device hard point. I like to use just the small one. The small one works wonders for me because what you can do is you can put it in a little corner like that. And then you will just vertex snap again, your thruster onto there. And if it's in a spot you don't like, which actually this happens to be in the perfect spot, what you can do is you just select your whole thruster. Come on. And you can move it around. And it'll be connected properly wherever you go. And so you can actually put it wherever you'd like a lot easier. Now, the only thing with this is you're gonna be putting it directly on your ship. So, when you're plating your ship, it is going to be a little bit wonky when you're putting things on, but that isn't too much of a big issue unless, you know, you're going for a combat ship with triangle thrusters. Then another thing to keep in mind is if you're using the large hard points and you do put them on the outside of your beams, 
usually the thrusters are going to bolt like this, so you're going to have to take off those bolts when you're putting plating around these guys. Otherwise, you're, those bolts right there aren't going to allow plates to go right next to them. Next up, we've got our maneuver thrusters. So our maneuver thrusters are, they're important for most small ships, but on large ships you might not actually want them. So what you're going to do is you really just put your maneuver thrusters in the orientations that you would like. So in this case for this ship, it is extremely basic, so just keep that in mind. I don't have left right maneuver thrusters, but ideally what you would want on a ship if you're using maneuver thrusters is a pair in the front and then a pair in the back. And keep in mind, they go on just any device hardpoint, so they can go on large or small, it does not matter. But ideally, you have two in the front and two in the back for every direction. So we'd have two downward facing ones in the back, um, two facing to the right of our ship here, but also in the back, and same with the left side to get your maximum turning speed. Now. Uh, maneuver thrusters aren't always the best thing that you can go with. So I know some of you have really liked building larger ships, so just keep in mind, triangle thrusters can be used as big maneuver thrusters. If you just put some of these in a square like we had earlier, what you can do is these can just act as a large maneuvering thruster because maneuvering thrusters, they do not give much power or much thrust rather, for how much power and propellant they consume. They are not very efficient. So if you're using a large ship, you can use these triangle thrusters just like a maneuver thruster. And so you probably saw me box up these triangles like this earlier. An interesting thing about triangle thrusters is as long as you put them next to each other, they can be named the same thing and will give well, they'll work as a single unit to give the same output of thrust. So on this combination right here, I only have to put one hard point on the back and it'll work for all of these. And if you use the thruster field name tool, which allows you to name your thrusters, these will all be named the same. So it's very handy for grouping thrusters. And also if you wanna make a cool thruster pack where you have some fancy triangles on the back making a cool looking engine. Now I'm going to show you how to really set up those thrusters that you just put on your ship. So first off, you're going to have to have your pilot chair and your basic control scheme. So for your throttles, so FCU forward and backward, you're going to want just a lever and that'll work perfectly. Then for everything else, so your FCU rotational pitch, yaw, roll, you're going to want centering levers. and. So the, those are your basic controls. Then if you want, so I know some people like to make a turtle mode. I'm gonna show you how to do that real quick. Turtle, what you're gonna do is this FCU general multiplier. You see how that's at 100? To have a turtle mode, essentially what you're gonna do is you're gonna set this value right here, this 100, to a different number. So if I fly this ship right now and I have it at 100, it's going to be as responsive as it can. But if I set it to 20, it's only going to be at 20% responsiveness, essentially. So next up, the part you're going to need is going to be your FCU. Now there are three versions of this, advanced, premium, and basic. Currently we're just using basic, but they allow you to do much more complicated maneuvers the higher up you get. So just keep in mind with these FCUs, this is very important, very, very important. Make sure the triangles are facing the front of your ship. That is the front of your ship. And make sure this little thing right here is facing upwards. I cannot stress this enough. This is one of the most important things. This will determine the orientation of your ship and will cause you a lot of issues if it's pointed the wrong direction. So. Finally, the other part you need before you can start naming your thrusters is your main flight computer. This just works with your FCU, and then this actually lets you name your thrusters so that they can be used and manipulated. So what we're going to do is you get your thruster field name tool, and you can have it on automatic, and it will automatically name all of the, all of the thrusters on your ship. But 
I like to have it on manual just in case I'm doing something funky. So manual, you can reset your device fields, reset for selected, and same with naming. So it's very easy. So I'm just gonna name all device fields right now. And that will automatically set up all of my thrusters with those thruster power levels, as you saw in the MFC. And so keep in mind, every thruster needs to have propellant and power connection. And it has to go all the way to your main flight computer and your FCU, as well as making sure your propellant is actually hooked up to your propellant tank along the line. So just keep that in mind because that is very important when you're putting thrusters on your ship. Then, if you did everything right, um, your ship theoretically should work, but it's Starbase, so it doesn't always work. I'm gonna show you just to see, and all right, so, Sometimes your FCU, you saw how it was a zero in there. If this is a zero, you might have to replace them. That's one of the first things I'm gonna say. Uh, if your ship isn't moving, check out your FCU. If there's a zero there, you're gonna have to replace that and your MFC. But the ship works. Now, it's not, it's not a fancy ship. It doesn't have great turning or anything, but it works. So what we're gonna do is we are going to go over to a ship that doesn't work and I'm gonna show you how to fix. All right, so we'll pop right over and I'll see you guys in a second. All right, so here we are. This ship was donated by one of you guys, the viewers, for me to take a look at for this video. So this ship has thruster problems and what we're gonna do is we're gonna fix them and I'm gonna show you how I fix thruster problems on my ships when an issue arises. First thing, we're just gonna get over to the door just so we don't have to travel far and we're gonna press N on our keyboard to turn on the flashlight. Very important. Then G to activate our mag boots. Now we'll hop in and we're gonna see. So I'm pressing shift right now and nothing's happening so as you can see the lever is moving so that's good but you know ooh, okay all right so we got funky things afoot guys so right now I'm pressing Q which is supposed to be roll left E which is supposed to be roll right then I'm pressing D so just yaw right I'm pressing a yaw left nothing happening and our pitch is good um, so I guess let's see what's wrong with it. So one of the first things I'm going to do is I'm going to check that these are all working properly. So when we put on our FCU forward, uh, we're actually going to turn that down just in case it does start to work so the ship doesn't fly off on us, but everything is giving inputs. So that's one of the first things you're going to want to check when you're actually making a ship. Uh, if, you're th if your thrusters are not responding to commands, make sure that your FCU is actually receiving inputs. And also, how I pulled up this little thing on my arm is pressing U while looking at the proper area. Or what you can do is you can press Tab, that'll activate your cursor, and you can press U on whatever your cursor is over. So we're going to go over to our MFC, and so far everything looks fine. So. What we're going to do is some things that are going to be a little basic. So right now, I wouldn't suggest doing anything more in the editor and well, in the test mode, I'd suggest going back to the editor. And what we're going to do is one of the first troubleshooting things I always like to do. Make sure everything is wired and piped. One of the main issues that I've seen when people are building ships is they'll accidentally forget to pipe a thruster. Now, you may be asking, you know, why that why is that such a big deal? So, if you have wire to a thruster but no pipe, the FCU, so what controls your ship movement, is going to think there's a thruster there that is functioning fully. So, when it does that, just imagine you're trying to move your arm, but you know, you you can't Ah, uh, that's, a, that's a terrible analogy. Okay, don't take that. But so essentially, it's saying the thruster is here and thrusting, but it's not actually doing anything, which will cause a lot of offset, especially if your center of mass is off. So what we're going to do is we're going to make sure 
everything is connected. Now, looking inside a ship is difficult, so what we're going to do is we're going to go over to the asset browser on the left and we're going to hide and lock beams and plates. And then we'll take a look. So first off, uh, one thing I want to do is I want to go back here. Now this is where our propellant tank is, we're actually going to hide machinery, ah, we can't really hide machinery. but um, so right back here that's where our actual propellant tank is we're gonna make sure this is hooked up we know it was hooked up because of well seeing the ship move but we want to just make sure all right so we've got an output there and no output here one thing you can do is if you bring up your pipe and cable tool if you just click say pipe you can see if connections are filled or not so right now, these two connections, those little blue squares right there, or cubes rather, those aren't full, so that means that's not connected. Here, however, both of these are connected. Now, there's a connection, okay. So this connection is going down here, and there's actually a, okay, there's a duct down there, so that's connected. Then, let's see if all of these are connected. All right, they're connected sequentially. Hmm. Okay, that might be our issue. Let's tr let's try something real quick. So, what I'm about to do is essentially see if these can actually thrust at all. When I saw that these were connected sequentially, what I'm thinking is these pipes aren't actually connected to each other. So these may not be thrusting back here just because they're not connected. So let's hit F5 and go back into our test mode. What you can do is you can set your current thrust, I think it is. Hmm. Or your power level, let's try that. Okay, yeah, so you set your power level. So that put out a measly amount of thrust. If you see in current thrust, if the number goes up, that means it's trying. But the thruster isn't activating. All right. So let's go back with our pipe. Let's try connecting these. Now, it is a little tedious sometimes, but it is what needs to happen to actually get this done. If this doesn't fix it, I might be wrong, but we'll continue going down our checklist. All right, so let's set that. Okay, similar issue. We'll go back up to our control scheme, see if that changed anything. Alrighty. Okay, I'm holding shift, so nothing's happening. That's a little bit of an issue. Um, now what I am seeing, okay, now that I'm looking at this, our batteries and our radiation rate are zero, and our fuel is full. It's not discharging. That screams to me that we're not actually generating power, which could be literally the entire issue with this. So... Let's see, let's make sure these are all properly. Okay, that's interesting. So we go over to here and you see the fuel chamber unit rate limit is set to max, but the unit rate is actually zero. Wonder what that's about. Let's, let's just make sure this thing was assembled fully. Okay, those are all connected. Let's make sure everything's bolted. Oh, this might take a second. Because it doesn't it didn't look like to me that these are bolted. But they are. Okay. Uh next up we've got Alright, pipe out. Cable out. Now. Hmm. Okay, so these are connected. These batteries are connected like that, but there's a red down here. Alright, I have a feeling that's supposed to go right there, just because that's where it's looking. Um, let's try it now. Okay, no forward thrust. Still nothing. And our generators are still not producing. Let's see if we can get our... Th okay, so our batteries are now discharging. 
they're just very, very slow. That's probably because there is a massive pack of batteries. Hmm, all right. Let's take a look. So we've got our, all right, both of these are hooked up. Then it goes down to here, okay. Then we've got this pipe down here. Now I'm not sure if this counts. Let's try doing this. Let's see if that changes anything. Because I'm sure, I think, if I'm doing this right, you actually have to have a direct connection to everything. So let's kind of just follow our little, oh geez, yeah, this area, yeah, the radiator wasn't connected at all. This, this isn't connected to anything. Okay. So those two are connected though. Alright, let's follow this back. Um, you go over to here, and then are not connected again, probably. Let's try that. Okay, there we go. Now uh, these turned red, that means they're good. So now it is actually consuming from our radiator. We can't actually see it from inside the ship, so let's go outside. Alright, so that's something that can happen. Just make sure your generator is working. Alright, our radiation rate is good. Let's head back inside. Now let's try some of the controls. Shift. Okay, shift is still not working. Alright, if you notice our Q and E, we're no longer really drifting to the sides. But it is still really slow. And that can just be how a ship is made. But yeah, no definitely, that's just how the ship is. Um, the, so maneuver thrusters, remember placement guys, placement, placement is everything. When you're trying to get the most torque out of something, you would want to place these far away. So if this were my ship, these guys, I would ideally want them like right here in this, in this corner, right here, and this corner over here. That way they'd get the maximum roll. Okay, so. We've hooked up most of these, so let's continue hooking up all of these thrusters and let's see what where it gets us. So now these front ones, uh, almost all of them, are hooked up. Let's just make sure those are all connected. I want to make sure for sure. Uh, these side ones, I don't know about the that one's properly connected. Okay. Um. This isn't fully connected. And I think the same might go for cables. We'll just make sure. And also keep in mind, ah uh, yeah, so this, this is another potential design flaw in your ships. So here, we're gonna go up here to visualization tools, center of mass. So this little, little purple dot over here popped up. Take a quick look at that. Now, take a look at where the turning thrusters are. If you notice, the back set of maneuver thrusters for turning left-right are here, and the front set are right here. Both of those are, both sets are in front of the center of mass. That is very bad. You have to have your thrusters on either side of the center of mass, and that will give you way more torque than if they're just on one side. Like, a lot. A lot. Ideally, these maneuver thrusters would be back here. This would actually be a perfect spot for them. So we might actually do that at the end of the video, uh, fixing this up. But keep in mind just that, plus with a lot of mass, you know, cargo crates, they add a lot of mass. That that creates also an issue. If, the, Yeah, basically just mass. Make sure they're around the center of mass. All right. So those are hooked up. Let's just make sure everything in the back is hooked up now. All right. And what I what I was just doing there was I was just clicking on these to make sure they are named properly. And it appears everything is named. So that's good. And yeah, let's just keep hooking these up. So one thing that you guys might notice is when... I honestly, oh shoot. Okay, that's another thing you guys might want to pay attention to. Don't overlap your cables, wires, and stuff all the time. When you're trying to fix a ship, it does make it a lot more difficult. 
and especially doing stuff like this where you just have kind of a network in here yeah just stay away from that um so all right where, where was my train of thought okay big ships big ships so big ships you're gonna have a lot of thrusters right and if you noticed earlier in the video the mfc that we had only has 50 fields for thrusters now you probably noticed you know tri you can say triangle thrusters right triangle thrusters they have um a w when you connect them right they're all the same device field so that really saves a lot of space but what if i like box thrusters how about that and what if your thing is to just use box thrusters and you have tons of them well you're gonna have to use that manual tool so in the thruster name field tool what i would do is don't have it on automatic and don't name all device fields when you've got a big ship and you've got lots of box thrusters or things and you're running out of space on your mfc what you can do is you can still group box thrusters what you're going to do is you're just going to select both of them and then do the selected thrusters and you're going to reset the device fields and then you're going to put in here the same thing so make sure like this one's thruster power level nine and then make sure this one is nine as well and then your fcu and mfc will think they're just the same thruster and find an average point of thrust which is very handy now let's go back in here and see if we can get these thrusters to kick on because we were having some severe issues with that huh all right if you just noticed that thruster went to 10,000. 10,000 is the maximum essentially not really throttle, but it's the maximum amount of output the thruster can have. And even with those on maximum thrust, nothing is happening. Okay, so let's head back there and figure out what the hell is going on. Um, none of these are actually outputting, which is slightly worrying. Let's... Yeah, nothing at all. No, no... Usually, what you'll see is the thrusters will at least have a little tiny plume, and they'll turn on. Now, this is something for sure. You'll notice when I pull up the U tool, there's nothing on the right side and nothing on the lower side. What that means is it is not connected. So, see these? These are connected to the rest of the system. These are not. So, let's go check out, check out that connection. Okay, yeah, so... Again, this this is a rookie mistake when you're make when you're working with triangle thrusters. So just keep this in mind. So we're gonna pull these off, and but first I'm gonna let you look at them. Remember earlier in the video. So the triangle thrusters, how I said they have very specific hard points. Notice where the hard points are. Yeah, so that'll be our issue for this one. We're gonna pull these off. Then we're gonna unhide our plates. So, sorry, but we're gonna have to eat these off the back of the ship. And we are gonna have a little bit of a cleanup here. All right, this is gonna be funky. But just keep in mind, they do actually, the, the hard points, they do have to be connected. Now, I will say, you know, the person who made the ship is a rookie. And everyone who's starting in Starbase, don't get disheartened. I, I always feel really bad for like having to tear apart a ship and put a lot of things back together. But it's all part of the learning process. You, you can bet your buckets I did this when I was first designing a ship. Okay? So, just, just keep that in mind. I... Even I come from humble beginnings of really crappy ships. So if if you mess up something and you're like, oh man, I am a dumbass. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Everybody does it. Everybody. All right. We'll put this bad boy back on. Make sure we've selected everything because triangles have so many weird small parts. And let's see. Is that any good? That looks to be connected to a beam. So we'll call that good. Now we are going to press add bolts. Now I did 
auto bolt, add bolts to everything. That does take a while. So if you're looking for a faster bolt, just do apply to selection and that'll make things a lot faster. But okay, our warp class is all good. Everything's bolted in. Let's just cable and pipe this bad boy up. And we're actually gonna hide our plates again so we can get behind them. Where are they? So hiding, you know, it, well, hides them from your view, but what does locking do? So the locking, actually lets it so that we can't even touch them. And that is very handy because when you're working in the back of a ship like this, that means, you know, you don't actually have to make, you know, you're, you're not gonna have to pull apart the back of your ship for everything to work magically. And let's put everything, oh, I don't wanna do this. Oh, actually that works fine. I thought it was gonna be hovering like that. All right, there we go. Um, there we go. Come on. Yeah, come on. All right. And it looks like everything is connected now. Those little orange bits that we saw earlier, like that, that just means uh, they're disconnected. So make sure when stuff shows like that, it's actually properly connected. And then cable is going to be red. When it's red, that means it's not connected. So even when you... Ah, Ah, uh, even I mess up putting crap on ships still. You know, I spent so much time in Starbase, I still make mistakes. You'll love to see it. It's going to happen to everyone, no matter how experienced you are. So just keep that in mind. Thrusters are tricky. Getting a ship to work is tricky. Um, ooh. All right, that. Now, where's our... Okay, it's over here. So let's pull this over there. All right, let's try that. Who knows if this is gonna work, if that solved our problems, but we're gonna find out. All right, our generators are working, all this stuff. Ah, no cigar. Now, this is confusing because our, pla or our other thrusters, so like our rotation and everything is working. Now, is there a secondary propellant tank? Okay, it's just this. Let's find out what the issue is. Alright, we'll take our pipe. It could be that those aren't connected right there. Keep in mind, guys, when building ships, make sure everything's connected fully and has, and depending on the ship, make sure it has redundancy. Redundancy is very nice. If you've got things connected to each other in multiple spots, that makes things a lot less hard to you know have an oopsie or if you forget something somewhere on your ship makes it a lot easier to recover now if that's what it was this should thrust okay it didn't that is odd let's go up here see what's shaking all right so our FCU is on full. I'm sorry, what? Did it just pitch up? Okay, interesting, interesting. Collecting all this information, figuring out what the hell is going on. Um, wait a second. No, no, gas. Okay, we've seen that gas has that there's actually a value in here. Um, it's connected, it's connected. Let's check that it's powered properly. Okay, it appears to be powered properly. All right. Interesting. Okay. Now, your guys' ships usually, um, if you're watching this right now, you're going to know a couple things to uh, stay away from or to change when you're building your ship. So, yeah, just keep that in mind when you're actually building a ship. All right, and our so our roll's good, our left, right is good compared to before, compared to before, and our pitch is good. Now, we just don't have forward thrust. Now... What the heck? Alright, so let's head to the back of the ship 
and see what's going on. Alright, no current thrust, but things are hooked up, which is nice. So. Alright, uh, so that did nothing. That didn't even try to output, so sorry for the chat box. Uh, so that tried to output a little, but these are just generally not outputting anything. Um, so let's see what's going on here. So, thruster power, I want to make sure everything, let's make sure everything was built correctly. These are tier 1s, tier 1, tier 1, alright, um, those are connected properly, yes, uh, so one thing uh, that uh, many of you may have enabled as well, which could have been the issue there, is if your ship warp class is really low, aka below 1, what your ship will do is it will actually turn down how fast you can actually go at a maximum to try and keep you from ripping your ship apart, which that's what I thought it was, but it's not. Let's actually pop in real quick, see if we can get these bad boys to thrust. No, nothing. All right, this screams that cable is hooked up for sure, but pipe somewhere has forsaken us. So let's go over here and see if we can hook it up. Now it's quick and dirty, but when you're doing stuff like this, sometimes it can be. All right. Okay, there we go. All right, it moves forward, so... All right, but it's only the triangles. Now, it's better than nothing, but we still got to get those box thrusters working. So let's figure out what's up with those. Now, so what we did was we connected propellant from a different area. There may have just been a disconnect in the propellant over here, or I missed a spot, something like that that could have resulted in propellant not getting across. Which actually, it might be this. Let's try that. Then that has propellant. Um, let's make sure this has a cable connection for sure as well. Just want to double check everything. Because if we've got part of our back thrusters working, but not all of them, that is a little interesting all right let's go up here open our door uh, keep in mind doors opening in flight is likely to throw your ship off balance and nothing with the boxes again all right if I turn these on max nothing let's try renaming everything to get it to work all right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna reset all everything and then we're gonna name everything. A classic, turn it off, turn it back on again. All right, no cigar. And me just opening the door when I explicitly said don't. That's the way it goes a lot of times. Even I break my own rules. Okay, so something is funky with the boxes. They're connected, but they won't thrust. Hmm. Okay, let's double check. Tier one, tier one, tier one, tier one. And that's anyone's game. They are connect. That's it. Oh, that, that's a simple one. Oh, that's a simple Rick moment. Um, Okay, so, let's see where these beams are. Alright, they've got beams here, right? But sometimes, these uh, hard points won't attach to beams. And that is an issue. Now, I can guarantee you, this will thrust.
Easy money. Okay, so what was happening there? You have to have your hard points that your thrusters are mounted on. They have to be connected to a beam. 100%, they have to. That's what these little orange squares are, and that's what it means. So that's what was holding us back. All right, so let's uh, get in here. And oftentimes, they won't bolt all the way through to get to said beam. So sometimes you got to do something a little sneaky like that. If, if you can't avoid it, try not to do this on your ships. It's it's honestly a really just simple method to get it to connect, but I would not recommend it. Also, for anyone wondering what I'm how I'm doing my like view controls right now, I'm holding right click and then moving around with uh, my wasad and then uh, left clicking to place down these bolts. All right. So now, this ship should 100% work. Alrighty, there we go. Okay, there we go. All of our thrusters are firing, and let's test out that roll and pitch. Alright, there's our pitch, you can see that. Here's left, right. And look at that, our left and right is a little bit better now that we're moving. Our roll is still eh, but it is somewhat of a roll. Actually, wait, hold on a second. Left roll is good, but right roll is being funky. Haha, -ha, there are things to fix. Alrighty, what we're gonna do, FCU rotational roll, 100. And let's see what's going on. Alrighty, a thruster is firing. So it's trying to roll right. It's using these roll thrusters. And it's not, okay. This is it. You guys see how it's rolling? This was one of the things I mentioned at the beginning. One of the thrusters down there appears to be connected to cable, but not pipe. So let's hide these. All right, and these cables are, this actually might have done it as well. These cables are all kind of disconnected. Um, pipe. I'm just gonna make sure everything's piped up properly now. Um, I actually kind of want to. Ah, I see, everything's like slightly off the ground. That's a little annoying, but all right, let's make sure. Honestly, in situations like this, it is sometimes better to just not hook up or to not have these uh, ducts down and just instead put through uh, your all your little things, as in your pipe and cable. All right, still an issue. Alright, this is screaming to me that there's a thruster somewhere that is either misoriented or isn't correctly being communicated with. So, that thruster's firing. What I'm looking for is firing thrusters that are trying to counteract what's going on. So, that thruster is firing, which is real funky. So, let's see what's going on. If we hit it with a reset all and name all, will that fix our issues? No. Okay. Sometimes, so this is due to happen in some FCUs and everything. Uh, it may just not work properly, but let's name these thruster power levels the same over here. And we don't care about the current thrust output. That uh, is not changed at all. So let's change these both to 18. Uh, yeah, the current thrust, that is not really read by anything right now. Um, but if you wanted to change that, that might be something in the future to change.
Alright, I just kind of want to get us out of here so we can... Alright, let's see what happens. Okay, still the same issue. Alright. This could honestly be the thruster placement. Um, either that or something is not connected. It's one of the two. I tell you guys again and again, make sure everything's connected properly. That's all. Just a double check. Uh, that cable's connected. That cable's connected. That's connected. That's connected. This is questionably connected. Um, that's connected. Alright. Oop. Yeah, let's not do that. That's gonna make things worse. Alright. These bad boys, they appear to be connected. Yep. These bad boys. This one appears to be connected. Uh, this one... That is screaming unconnected to me. Um, let's just double check that it is actually connected to the ship. Okay. Alright. So if this turns out to be uh, not working this time, then um, what it is going to be is it's just going to be uh, how the ship... Yeah, okay. So keep in mind, guys, when you're designing your ships, sometimes the flaws of your thrusters, they can't be fixed. Like, I hate to say it sometimes, but sometimes you can't fix it by plugging in more things or changing your device fields. It is just going to end up being where you've actually placed your thrusters. Say it time and time again, thruster placement is everything. So what it feels to me is that the FCU is incorrectly, incorrectly recognizing one of these because of the weird center of mass here because it thinks that all of these are in front of the center of mass, that it will use that as a turning thruster, that main thruster as a turning thruster, which is not what we want. We don't want that. So it's going to be issues like this that can just make everything really rough. So let's see, if I delete this, is there going to be any major uh-ohs? Okay. All right, we're going to try this real quick. If this doesn't work, I'll eat my hat. Um, but yeah, let's find out. Alright, and this didn't get connected, but we're going to force it to. Congratulations. Um, do, do, do. There we go, there we go. And we're just dragging these over. This is going to be quick and dirty. Um, nothing special. Just trying to see if it will actually work. Alright. I really should have done apply by selection bolt again. Remember, that's just an issue I've been having. It does speed things up. Alright. Oh. It's dirty, but... Oh, something over there is freaking out. There we go. All right, let's cable and pipe and get these working. And we're gonna we're gonna lock the place, but we're gonna leave the beams. So this is a cable, so we're gonna connect it from over here. All right, and here's our pipe. Now I always like to have cable and pipe in different sockets. Um, it's just something I always do, and it helps me keep things straight when there are a bunch of things going on. AKA, you're plugging in new thrusters and things like that, and that way you just know. Plus, there's no overlap. Oh, that just auto-snapped over there. So, auto-snapping is a thing, just be wary of that, and it will snap your pipes and cables. 
into places you might not necessarily want them to go. Which isn't fun, but it's the way the cookie crumbles. Alright. Keep in mind, this is, yeah, this is just really quick, messy, trying to get this ship to work. Alright, and then we just need propellant over here, and theoretically, if I'm right, this should fix it. Alright, everything's green. Uh, we're gonna unname, reset, name all, and let's find out what happens. That's the strangest thing. Hmm. Well, I guess I'm gonna eat my hat today. But, yeah. So sometimes it is really just the thruster design. There's something along the way that is being an issue. So, yeah, there's any number of things it could be. It could be these, right there. Those are sometimes an issue um, with counter thrusting like that. Yeah, there's a lot of things, but I guess what you guys can take away from this is even me, I have trouble troubleshooting ships sometimes. There are a lot of steps and a lot of different things that can happen in your ship that will break it and might end up, you know, ruining things. Now, thruster placement, very important, making sure everything is hooked up and piped properly, also very important. Honestly, at this point, what it feels to me is there are two things that could be wrong that is making the roll bad. And that is either just the basic thruster placement, because everything is way too close together, and that does create a lot of issues when you're trying to get some torque. Either that, or something along the way is just not plugged in properly. So it's got like a cable, but not propellant, stuff like that. So, there's, there's something, but, yeah. For the sake of time, I'm gonna end it here, but if you've got any questions, uh, usually my Starbit, or my streamer Discord, which is gonna be linked below, is usually a lot of help. So if you run into issues that can't be solved in here, maybe throwing something in there to see if you can help out, because if we can help out, because, you know, e even with this, you know, it is very difficult to troubleshoot ships. Even I can't do it fully sometimes. In this case, this is something very similar to the Nebulon B, which suffered from a large lack of good thruster placement. If any of you guys have seen that on my channel, you guys know rolling that thing is like rolling a tank. It's not good. And that's what this feels like. But so anyways, I'd like to thank you all for watching. I hope you learned something from this and maybe are able to troubleshoot your own thrusters in the future. And I hope you have a good rest of your day.